Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about the top paying cybersecurity certifications. Obviously, these are going to vary by your experience level and your skill level, as well as the area in cybersecurity that you're going into. So starting with number seven, I actually put two certifications as part of number seven because, because they surprisingly actually make the same average amount with both of these certifications, even though they are considered at different skill levels. And that is the CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker Certification, and the OSCP, which is the Offensive Security Certified Professional Certification. So all the salary data that I have in this video is used from Payscale just to keep everything consistent, but obviously different sources are going to have different numbers based on the data that you're pulling. But very surprisingly, the CEH certification actually has a higher average salary compared to the OSCP, and that is an average of $96,000 a year for the CEH and $95,000 a year for the OSCP. Now, obviously these both are great certifications for pen testing, ethical hacking, but if you're someone who is very deep in the weeds in hacking and red teaming, the OSCP is definitely a much more advanced certification compared to the CEH. And the OSCP is typically also for people who are a bit later in their hacking careers or pen testing careers. So you basically have two widely known hacking certifications, but the CEH is definitely a lot more common because it is technically easier to get and you need less years of experience to be able to pass it. Even though the OSCP doesn't have years of experience required, it's definitely a lot more advanced and someone with just a few years of experience, they may still be able to get the certification, but it'll definitely be a lot of intense studying and grinding while they're studying for that cert. And just my personal thoughts on why the CEH pays on average an actually higher salary than the OSCP is because, again, this is my opinion, that because OSCP is so difficult to get, some people might just stop at their CEH. They may still be highly skilled and they may still continue moving forward in their careers, which is no surprise, even without the OSCP certification. And as they climb their ladder and go further in their careers, they'll still be making higher salaries, even without that advanced certification. So, so it really just depends what you value more if you want that certification. Obviously that certification can really boost your career and, and land you more jobs for especially red teamer roles that may require an OSCP. The CEH certification does require you to have two years of prior work experience that's relevant to ethical hacking or something in that cybersecurity offensive security space or a security related field. While the OSCP, even though it is more advanced, doesn't require years of experience like the CEH. So another thing to keep in mind. And I'll also list the cost of these certifications on the screen for anyone who is interested. And you can of course check out more at the official websites for these certifications as well. The OSCP certification is probably going to be the longest exam on this list with just about 24 hours of exam time. It is also one of the most hands-on intensive exams that you will be in. The exam basically simulates a live network in a private VPN and it contains a number of machines that you have to hack into. And you have to hack into a majority of those machines to be able to pass the exam, but you're also going to have to write up the reports just like a normal pen tester or a red teamer would. And you have about 23 hours and 45 minutes to complete the exam. It is also live proctored the entire time. So someone is gonna be watching everything that you do. So it's not even the fact that you have to hack into these machines and also try not to lose points on certain things, depending on what the people grading the exam are looking for or looking to subtract or add points to, but it's the fact that you have to document the actual report of everything that you do while you're hacking into this machine. So you're required to write a professional report detailing all of your exploits, all the steps you use, the actual console output, just like you would in a normal pen testing report. So keep that in mind. It's not just the hacking you have to be good at. It's also the writing reports, the taking screenshots, the being able to show this information to a stakeholder or a client and have them understand and, and be able to walk through what you actually did to potentially try to repeat what you were able to find. But the OSCP also has a very thorough platform where you can actually train and basically practice exploiting machines that are also vulnerable and, and can give you an idea of what to expect on the real exam. But I do believe that practice platform does cost a good amount of money. So if you're able to get an employer to help you fund the training for your exam, that will obviously be a win-win. Okay, so the next certification on this list is actually one I had not heard of before prior to me doing the research on these highly paid for certifications in cybersecurity, and that is the ITIL certification or the Information Technology Infrastructure Library Foundation certification. Definitely a bit of a tongue twister there, but the ITIL certification typically pays an average salary of about $100,000 per year. And moving forward, all the certifications on this list are going to be in the six figure digits. So definitely keep that in mind as well. So ITIL is very interesting in the way that it has different levels of certifications from ITIL foundations to ITIL masters. 
and it's essentially a certification for best practices for implementing and delivering IT systems and services. So basically it has a lot to do with IT service management, which every company needs specifically for their IT teams, whether it's cybersecurity related or not. So this certification is definitely for someone who is more interested in that IT slash businessy side of, of an organization that isn't just purely cybersecurity related, but there's still overlapping areas with the cybersecurity team. For example, creating frameworks to manage risk in your company, help create more cost-effective processes, as well as improving ones that you already have existing, and just overall building a stable IT environment for your company when it comes to changes in your environment, growth, as well as scalability when you have more employees or more clients or more stakeholders coming on and using your IT infrastructures. So there's four certification paths in the ITIL world. And the one that I mentioned was the foundations one, which is actually the lowest ranking certification in ITL. And the average salary is already $100,000, which obviously tells you a lot. So just for this video's purposes, I will focus specifically on the ITIL foundation just because it is the course that you'll have to pass anyway to get the other certifications in this ITIL career path. So you start out with the foundation and the last step is the ITIL master. So those are the five levels of ITIL certifications and you'll have to complete every certification before the next one to move up to the next step. So definitely keep that in mind if this is a certification that you want to go for. Okay, so overall, the ITIL foundation course is actually a course and an exam combined. You'll be in a classroom for about two and a half days. And then at the end of the course, you have to take an exam, which has 40 questions that are multiple choice, and you have to get 26 of them right to pass the exam. So obviously that sounds a lot easier when I'm just saying it to a camera, but I'm sure the course itself is very intensive and you'll likely need to be comfortable with technology or different IT concepts before you go into the exam to ensure that you have the highest success rates of passing. The ITIL Foundations exam covers everything from creating valuable services for your customers or your stakeholders, as well as the basic principles of ITIL4, service management, best practices, and lastly, everything to do with lean, agile, and DevOps. So a lot of things around the software development lifecycle as well. And one thing to note is that the ITIL foundation course doesn't require any prior experience in IT, but their website does state that it will be helpful to have some knowledge of service management or IT management prior to you going into that course and taking that exam. And I also put on the screen the cost of the course plus the exam for anyone who might be interested. All right, number five on this list of highest paid cyber certifications is the GPEN certification or the GIAC penetration tester certification. So because GIAC is affiliated with the SANS organization, it, it obviously is a very popular certification just because the SANS organization is very, very well known in the cybersecurity space. But I promise this is going to be the last certification on this list that has to do with pen testing or ethical hacking. But the average salary for someone who has a GPEN certification is $103,000 per year. So the GPEN is another very popular pen testing certification that will require you to have in-depth hands-on experience already prior to you taking the certification because it definitely is very thorough similar to the oscp so it covers the whole gamut of pen testing not just the hacking piece but also everything that goes into pen testing whether it's planning scoping or doing recon as well as being able to scan and exploit your endpoint knowing what to do after you're able to exploit the target as well as being able to pivot when something isn't working if you go on the GIAC website itself it will tell you that this certification is specifically for ethical hackers red teamers pen testers, security personnel, so basically roles that are very technical as well as blue team. So this certification is essentially good for offensive security as well as defensive security. So definitely something to keep in mind if you're also on the blue team. This certification may still be helpful for you to understand what adversaries are thinking and what they're trying to target as well as the tools that they may be using against you for you to better understand how to protect your organization and your company's data and clients. They also have a practice simulation where they have actual programs and code that you can hack into as well as a virtual environment for you to play around with while preparing for your exam. The exam itself is a proctored exam with 82 questions. You need to get a 75% to pass and you'll have three hours to complete the exam. All right, number four on this list is one that many of you may be surprised to hear about, which is the CISA certification or the Certified Information Systems Auditor Certification. And I know so many of you guys on the channel are allergic to auditing and governance and compliance. So, so obviously the certification may not be for everyone, but audit and everything that has to do with the compliance side is very important for all companies. And that is why companies are willing to pay big bucks for these roles. And the average salary for a CISA certification is about $106,000 per year. 
year. So specifically for bigger companies that have a lot more, that have a lot more policies and regulations that they have to follow from the government or other official entities, those are the ones that are really going to need good auditors and they're also going to need auditors that have the CISA certification is given by the ISACA organization and the CISA certification website itself does have a pretty nice slogan. So obviously, if you're gonna go into IT auditing, getting the CISA certification is a great option, especially when you're thinking about moving up in your career. Maybe you're already in auditing and you want to make that next jump and get to that next level. So the exam itself covers everything from the information systems auditing process to IT governance, to the development and implementation of info systems, operations, and resilience, as well as keeping your actual information assets safe. So these things are definitely more on the governance IT side of cybersecurity. For those of you who may not just be interested in pen testing, there's a lot of roles in cybersecurity out there. And just being able to expand your knowledge on what options you might have can really be helpful in terms of choosing your next career or choosing the path forward for where you want to go in cybersecurity. The CISA certification does have prerequisites prior to you taking the exam, and that is for five years of experience in security, IT, governance, or anything related to those domains. But they do have experience waivers that can waive up to three years of experience. So depending on your eligibility for those waivers, you could actually take the exam with just two years of experience with three years waived. So I would definitely look into that a bit more if this is something you're interested in. But the exam itself has 150 questions and it is about four hours long. So this is definitely going to be a very intensive exam, probably similar to something like the SAT. So definitely keep that in mind. And I'll put the cost of the certification here on the screen for anyone who's interested. All right, number three on the list of the highest paid certifications in service security is the CISSP. So the Certified Information Systems Security Professional is probably the certification that all of you know about. It is probably as well known as the Security Plus or the A Plus, which are a lot more beginner certifications compared to the CISSP. But this certification is very popular as it's one that many cybersecurity organizations look for, for people who may be more closer to their mid or senior career. And the average salary for the CISSP certification is about $118,000 per year. So obviously that is a big jump up from the $106,000 per year for a CISA certification that we just discussed. But if you're looking at roles in cybersecurity that may be asking for five to seven plus years of experience, they likely might also include in there some required or preferred skills or experience. And one of those listed could likely be the CISSP cert. So the CISSP website has a whole list of roles in cybersecurity that would benefit from getting this certification. And that includes roles from a security architect to a security manager. So obviously that is a very, very wide range. I know people who are individual contributors who have their CISSP, as well as those who are in management positions who also may have gotten their CISSP. So it really depends what you want to do with your career, but getting a CISSP doesn't mean that you're going to go into management if you don't want to. It really depends on what you want to do, but it's really there to solidify your knowledge of certain concepts in information system security. It isn't just being able to know the information on a certification exam, but you also need to be able to apply it and understand it in a more applicable level compared to just being able to read a textbook and pass an exam. So that disclaimer is for all certifications out there, not just ones in cybersecurity. So definitely something I want to throw into this video. So to be CISSP certified, you have to have a minimum of five years of experience in two or more of the eight security domains in the CISSP exam. However, they have some form of waivers also to cover certain experience levels. For example, if you got a four years bachelor's or college degree or it's equivalent, then you can actually waive a year of experience, but they do have more details on the actual requirements around that. So I would definitely check out their website for more info. But one nice thing about the CISSP is that even if you don't have the years of experience, you can actually take the exam first and then get the associate of ISC squared, which is the umbrella organization that that created the CISSP. And then basically with that associate, you can kind of think of it as a pre-certification. You basically have six years to earn the five years of work experience, and then you'll officially be considered it CISSP certified. So it's pretty interesting how they're able to kind of get past that experience level. So you can still take it without getting the experience, but you'll just have to earn that experience afterwards within six years of, of taking and passing your exam. So definitely keep that in mind as well. 
And for those of you who may also watch my vlogs or some of my career goals videos that I've made, I do believe I've talked about planning on taking my CISSP. I don't really have a time frame for it, but it's likely the next certification I would want to get. But if anyone has any tips on studying for their CISSP, definitely drop them in the comments below for the community and that would be really, really helpful. All right, so the number two highest paid certification on this list is the CRISC certification. This is the certification in risk and information systems control, but the average salary for this certification is $127,000 per year. So this is another jump up about 10K from the CISSP average salaries. And this one is also a lot more related to the, to the risk management side of cybersecurity. So for anyone who is going into cyber and isn't interested in hacking, you can rest assured just based on this list of certifications that you don't have to be a pen tester or a hacker to be in cybersecurity. There are many, many roles from auditing to risk to compliance to SOC analysts to digital forensics to malware prevention. So I'm just gonna call this the C risk certification. But on the ISACA website, it says that, th that this is the only certification that is focused on enterprise IT risk management specifically. And this certification is focused on IT governance, planning for and completing IT risk assessments, which are again, very important for organizations, risk response and reporting, as well as overall information technology and security. So it's definitely a bit more of an umbrella role that combines risk and security. So it definitely is a much more niche role in cybersecurity, specifically because you're focusing on managing risk and creating risk frameworks. Now to be eligible for the C risk certification exam, you'll need to have three years of experience that's relevant to the field, specifically in managing information technology risk through designing or implementing information security controls. You'll need to have experience working in at least two of the domains I listed earlier, and at least one of those domains must be in domains one or two. So this exam is very specific in what it's looking for in its candidates. And in this case, for this certification, there are no experience waivers. So you have to have the exact experience that this organization wants to be able to be eligible to take this exam. So keep that in mind. These are very specific rules for a certification. The exam has 150 questions and you have four hours to complete the exam. The number one paid certification in cybersecurity is the CISM certification or the Certified Information Security Manager Cert who make an average salary of about $129,000 per year. Now, of course, all these numbers are average numbers. You'll likely find higher as well as lower numbers. So the CISM certification is also provided by the ISACA organization. So on the official site for the CISM certification, it states that this certification helps indicate expertise in information security governance, program development and management, incident management, and risk management. So obviously these are all very broad terms in cybersecurity, but the certification definitely seems to encompass more than just one aspect of information security. So you have governance, you also have risk management, and there's actually a new version of the CISM certification that's coming out in June of 2022. So it's not out yet, but for anyone who you know, might be interested in finding out the difference before they transition to the newest version. That'll always be helpful, especially when you think about your timeline for studying and they likely will be adding new material to the new versions of the exams. So the current study curriculum of the CISM is very similar to past certifications that we've seen on this list. To get the CISM certification, you'll need five years of relevant work experience with a minimum of three years of work experience in information security management in three or more of the development areas. Again, this certification also has very specific guidelines on who can take this exam. This exam and others in the ISACA organization are highly paid because you need specific experience to be able to then get this specific certification. This exam is also four hours long with 150 questions to answer. The cost to take the exam for this current version is $575 for members and then $760 for non-members. I'm assuming members as in part of the ISACA organization. All right, so I've basically thrown a whole bunch of information at you guys in the last hour of me recording, but hopefully by the time you see this video, it will hopefully be less than 20 minutes long. Let me know in the comments below if there's any certifications that you guys are currently studying for or anything else that you'd like to share with the community. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And thank you guys so much for all of your support on the channel. It's really exciting to see it grow like this. And, and let me know if there's any specific video topics you might want to see in the future. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.